Amen. Amen. We appreciate that song, those songs in worship tonight. And as we, uh, as we meet over here, keep in mind as we pray, we pray for uh, Brent and the things that's taking place over at the youth house. And we pray for those with the WANA uh, next door. What a great, great uh, ministry that is. And so we want to pray for those various ministries as the Lord uh, uses each one of them uh, tonight on this uh, church campus. So if you will, I'm going to do something different tonight. And uh, you, I have never, while working through a book, preaching through a book, verse by verse, word by word, verse by verse, line by line, precept on precept, I have never went in reverse. And tonight, uh, I'm going to do that. I don't know why, uh, but I, I want you to turn to John chapter 4. Uh, we have been here before, really not so many weeks ago. Um, maybe it's been more than a few weeks ago because we did have Christmas and we kind of talked about some Christmas stuff on Wednesday nights. Um, Abigail just wanted me to note tonight that John's dragging out forever. She says we'll be preaching on John until Jesus comes. Uh, let me go to another book, the Bible. What do you want? And she's like, yeah, Joshua or something, you know. Uh, but, but anyway, I mean, it's the Bible. I don't know what it matters. Uh, not picking on you, Abigail. I wouldn't dare call your name out, Abigail. So, Abigail, are you listening tonight? <laughs> She's mad now because she can't get up here and do this, see? So, we pick on each other. But John, the Gospel of John, John chapter 4, familiar story, familiar passage of Scripture. Again, we preached on it not so many weeks ago. Uh, and I don't know why, but this is the Lord has backed us up to this place. And so I want you to think tonight, last week at the end of John uh, 6, I believe, uh, we, uh, we spoke about radical faith, radical faith in troubled times. We saw, or maybe it was John 7, we saw the whole chapter was just uh, really full of trouble and, and, uh, and animosity toward Christ. And uh, we talked about how that uh, that's where we're at today. We live in a culture, and we we live under a government uh, that is very anti-God, anti-Christian, and anti-Christ, and anti-church. That's the world in which we are living in here in America. That's what America is evolving to be because of its leadership. Uh, and so that was a very uh, relevant last week, ra uh, radical faith in troubled times. Tonight I want you to think on this thought, I want you to think on uh, radical love, because that's what we see in John chapter 4 is radical love. And here's the thing about John 4 as I read, uh, and I mentioned this, alluded to it when we, talked, when we preached on John 4 uh, several weeks ago, or maybe several months ago now, but this passage of Scripture is about a woman. She is an unnamed woman in Scripture. This is not a parable. Uh, this is a true story, a true-to-life story. Uh, it actually happened. But the woman is unnamed. Some of the miracles of Jesus, uh, the person is named, blind Bartimaeus or Bartimaeus, however you choose to say it. Uh, Jesus healed him. He's named. Uh, we know who he was. But this woman, she remains unnamed. Uh, and I think the reason for this is because this could really be any woman that is watching on Liberty Live tonight or any woman who is sitting in Liberty Church tonight or any woman who would find herself under the, the preaching or teaching or in devotion on John chapter 4. So it could apply uh, to any woman that is uh, that this scripture has crossed their paths. Uh, and so tonight specifically, for some reason, I pray tonight there'll be a man here who really gets something and gleans something from this or on Liberty Live. Uh, but tonight specifically, as my heart has been burdened, tonight this message is, is for a particular girl, a particular woman, a particular lady, maybe many women, many girls watching uh, will uh, the Lord will speak to their hearts from this text. But, uh, and, and I want to stress uh, what Jesus uh, began right here in John chapter 4, was he exalted the value of women. Jesus did. 
Now, don't get me wrong when I start saying what I'm saying. I'm not speaking about, uh, I'm not speaking of uh, feminism and the feminist movement uh, because the feminist movement is not a movement that is seeking equality. The feminist movement is a liberal left-wing movement that is seeking superiority uh, over men. Uh, but I want you to understand something, that, that, that God in the garden, he made woman, he made Eve from the side of man, from the rib of man, meaning they're, they're co-equal uh, and, and they're both equally important in the eyes of God. Uh, and so there may be people or they may be certain areas or they may be certain sects or they may be certain religions who undermine the value of women. But I always want to take them to scriptures and say that Jesus, that he exalted the value of women and he emphasized the value of women. Uh, and, and in fact, John 4, this woman goes in, in one day. She does more than all, than all the disciples did in their lifetime because in one day she goes back and brings all the men in the city to come meet Jesus. Uh, and then we see uh, the very first person to ever carry the gospel message was a woman uh, there at the empty tomb, run back and told all the disciples, he's not here, uh, for, but he's risen uh, as he said he would. And, and so uh, Jesus, he emphasized and he declared the importance of of women in society. Uh, and so we believe that they are equal to man, that they're not under man, uh, that they're not over man, uh, but they're equal to man and they're equally as they're equally useful uh, in God's kingdom and in kingdom work. But let me say this about women also. I believe because of many reasons, but I believe that, that women particularly, uh, particularly those who are uh, those who are uh, children of God, those who have been saved by grace and belong to Jesus. Uh, I believe women come under extraordinary spiritual attack. And I believe even more so than men. I, I really do. I know uh, I'm, not un I'm not undermining the battle that goes on in men's minds and, and, and the battles men have at all. Uh, but uh, I believe women, for various reasons, I believe that, that you, uh, you battle inside of you battles that other people don't understand, except maybe other women. Uh, I, believe that, uh, I believe that you carry a large, large load, a large burden as you tend to your family, as you tend to your home, as you care for your children and you love your children. Uh, I, I really... I uh, think when all of my heart, the devil knows your importance in the home. And because the devil knows your importance in the home and, and in the church, uh, that he brings special spiritual attack uh, upon you and who you are as God's child and who you are as a woman uh, and, who, uh, and he tries to pull you down and keep you from who God wants you to be. Because God's got a plan for every woman that's listening tonight or every young girl, young lady that would be listening tonight. God's got a plan. He's got a, uh, he's got a place. He's got a purpose for you. And, uh, and trust me, as the enemy would like to take your daily burdens and trials, and he would like to pull you down and keep you away from what God's got in store for you. So we're speaking uh, to women tonight for some reason uh, about some radical love. But let's look at this text, John 1, uh, and at least I think I'm just going to go 1 through 19, and then I'm going to have you pull up verse 28. John 4, verse 1. John 4, verse 1 through 19. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees has heard that Jesus made and baptized more of the disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city uh, of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink, for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, watch what she calls him to begin with, being a Jew, underline that in your Bible, uh, ask us drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews, which you are, she's speaking to Jesus, have no dealings with the Samaritans. 
Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, then you wouldn't have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Now she calls him Sir, so underline that. She said Jew, and then she calls him a Sir. You don't have anything to draw with, and the well is deep. From uh, whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drink thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him uh, shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water. He called, she, she calls him Sir again, that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, perceive that uh, thou art a prophet. Let's stop right there. At least can you pull up 28 or scroll ahead to 28? So she calls him a prophet. In verse 28, the Bible says this, The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to all men, she goes to all those men and she wants them to come back to the city. She tells them, come meet a man uh, that's unlike any other man I've ever met. And so she goes and just tells about Jesus and they come and the Bible says many believe uh, and then because many believe, then there's a bunch more believed and so God used this woman in his work and he had a radical love toward this sinful, broken woman. And, and so I want you to look at a few things, if you will. We talked last time, watch this, we talked last time about how that, that Samaria was out of the way of the Lord. It was out of his way. He really went out of his way to go and to cross paths with this woman at the well. Uh, and then... And not only did he go out of his way to cross paths with her, but notice as I pointed out through the scriptures, to begin with, uh, this woman calls Jesus a Jew. Uh, and then, then, there, then the next step, uh, she several times calls him sir. Uh, and then there's another step uh, where uh, she calls him, you know what, I think you're a prophet. Uh, and so then there's another step uh, where she says... Uh, not only are you a prophet, but, but I think you're the Christ. And, and, and so there was like this plan as the Lord talked to her. He had this plan and it was laid out really just, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, like a well-executed plan or one, two, three, four, five, like a well-executed plan because he wanted to reach this one woman. So he goes out of his way. He goes on a, in a place where he's not supposed to be, where he's not supposed to go. He goes and associates with people he's not supposed to be around. He goes out of his way. And, and, then, and then he introduces himself and she calls him a Jew. The next step, then she calls him sir. And then the next step, then she uh, calls him, uh, and then she says, uh, you're a prophet. And then the next step, she says, you're the Christ, the Messiah. And so it's like the Lord had this plan to reach this one woman. And he knew the whole time, he knew before this woman was born, uh, he knew before he was incarnated in the manger or in, in Bethlehem, uh, he knew before the foundation of the world that on this day, at that hour, this woman would make her way to the well, to draw water. Now, I don't know if that excites you or not, but here's what I want to say to you. It excites me because you may have had no clue 15 years ago that this is where you'd be tonight or you'd be watching on Liberty Live tonight. You may have had no clue when you were five years old that you'd be watching on Liberty Live tonight or that you'd be sitting in Liberty Baptist Church. You may have been born in another country uh, you may have lived in another state, been born in another part of the state, but you know what God knew that you didn't knew? God knew that at what 725 on a Wednesday night in February that you'd be sitting in Liberty Baptist Church in the year 2021. God knew that about you. 
And so if you will look at your life, whoever you are, uh, young lady or senior lady or whoever you may be watching on Liberty Live or seated in this church, if you, were look at, you will look at your life leading up to tonight, and we're talking about tonight because you've got to understand what God's done here. We're, we're supposed to be on in John chapter 8, I think, verse 1. And God backed us up four chapters and said, go back and do this again. And, and you've got to understand what goes on just trying to follow the Lord doing something like that. Uh, and, and so God has backed us up and, and he's, he's parked us here again uh, because he's got something for you tonight, whoever you are. And if you would look at your life and you would just really examine where you have been the last week or month or year or six years or the last 10 years or the last 20 years, if you will look at your life, I think you're going to clearly see it's almost as if God has had this plan that has been written out and step by step by step he has unfolded this plan to bring you where you're at right now in your heart and in your life and to bring you here to liberty tonight through Liberty Live or by sitting here physically with us worshiping tonight around the Word of God. See, God's got this plan. And he's led you. So where you're at right now, uh, inside of your heart of hearts, the Lord has allowed you to get to that place. He may have either led you to this place inside of your heart, uh, or he just allowed you to get there. And, 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 and he's did that. And, then the, and if, I, if I know how the Lord works, and I, and, I, and, I, and I do because I've been there, but if I know how the Lord works, then it's also no strange thing that you come tonight or you tune in tonight. It's no accident. It is as if there has been some steps these last days or weeks or months that has led you to this very place tonight here on Liberty Live or here inside of our church. And so you've got to know that there is such radical love coming from God the Father for you. He's wanting to love you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've done. And I don't care because the Lord Jesus, he doesn't care. He loves you with a radical love. And he has sought you. He is seeking you out. He is trying to woo you, win you, and bring you to a place where he can win you unto himself. That's what he's doing. So number one, I just want you to notice, I don't really even have points. I don't know why I say number one. I've got two things I just want to point out, but, but that's the thing I want to point, it, want to point out to you is that as in this woman's life, there were these steps that the Lord was using to reach her. And now God's been doing these things in your life, and if you look at it, you're going to see that some things have been happening that are not accident. Some things are, have been happening that are divine intervention in your life. And how you ought to rejoice that he's went out of his way to come to where you are at in your life, to intervene in your life. I see it in my own life. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't in church when he came to me, but I want you to understand, I'm glad that he's not limited by location because he went to where he didn't have to go to reach this woman with a radical love. And listen, he doesn't have to come to the church to reach you. He doesn't have to come to Liberty Live to meet you. In fact, right now tonight, you may be sitting in a bar somewhere while we preach this message, but in a week or in a month, you're going to go back and click on this message and watch this message tonight and know that it's radical love that's chasing you. So listen, it's the, 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 the Lord moving and touching you is not saved and reserved exclusively for a church or a church altar or a church pew. But I'm glad he can come to a bar stool too if he has to. I'm glad he can come to an alleyway. I'm glad he can come to a homeless shelter. Uh, I'm glad he can come into an abusive home, an abusive situation, an abusive relationship. And he can reach you wherever you're at because here's what I know about the Lord. He's got a radical love for me and you. And he took women and he exalted their value in everything he did. Not above a man and not below a man but he exalted her value to that equal with the man. So before the Lord at the cross, at the foot of the cross, we stand equal before the Lord. But he loves you with a radical love. And if you look at your life, you're going to see that there has been these things happening and taking place and quit looking at them as circumstances, quit looking at them as disappointments, quit looking at them as discouragements.
Stop looking at them as, as happenstance or coincidence and realize that the Lord was allowing these things to take place inside of your heart of hearts and in your life or He was divinely guiding you step by step by step by step until He parked you here tonight. Either in front of a, a, a smartphone, a computer, a smart TV, or in this building tonight. So hang on, just watch. Such radical love. And so... We see that uh, in this text. I'll tell you what else we see in this text is this, and it's in that last verse, verse 28. The Bible says this. The Bible says that she left her, she left her water pot and went to the city to tell all the men of that city, come see a man. Come meet a man who's told me all that I've ever did. I want to listen that water pot, what was that? That, that, was her, that was what she was going to carry water in. That's what she was going to carry water in. And in the conversation with Jesus, he makes it very clear to her that if she drinks the water that comes out of that well, she will thirst again. And if he drinks of the water that he gives her, she'll never thirst again. So the water pot represents that which only brings temporary satisfaction. Are you with me? The water pot represents that which only brings temporary satisfaction. So it will quench her thirst, but it will only be for a little while, what she carries in that water pot. It's not permanent, it's not everlasting, it's not eternal, but really just a few short minutes, or depending on how hot it is, how hard she's worked, or a few short hours at most, will the water in that water pot satisfy her. It's limited. It's very limited, and it's very temporal, and it's going to pass away. And she'll have to go back again and again and again and again to become satisfied by what's in her water pot. That water that come out of Jacob's well, whom the Lord said, you're going to just get thirsty again. You'll have to go drink out of it again and again and again and again because you're always going to find yourself thirsty and thirsty and thirsty and thirsty. Thirsty and satisfied, thirsty and satisfied, thirsty and satisfied. A never-ending cycle because it's a temporary satisfaction that she'd get from that. Well, I just want to tell you something. When Jesus offered himself as a well of water that would be in her, that would spring forth into everlasting life, and told her that she drinks of the water he gives, she'll never thirst again. Somewhere, right, somewhere in Jesus ministering to her radical love, she believed it and she drunk of that living fountain that sprung inside of her. And she was so excited about this permanent satisfaction that she left her water pot and ran to the city and told all that she had seen and heard of Jesus. Now think about this, the water pot. She leaves it, that which brings temporary satisfaction. She left it and she went with what was inside of her, a well of water that springs into everlasting life. That's radical love, my friend. Only God can love you like that. So let me talk to you just a minute about temporary satisfactions, young lady, uh, dear ma'am, the women that are watching on Liberty Lie. What we all are guilty of, not just women, but men as well, but I'm speaking to a woman tonight for whatever reason. I don't know why. Sometimes you may get wrapped up in your career. Maybe you've chased a career and you have tried and tried to find satisfaction in that career. Maybe for a while you found satisfaction in a career only to find out that it was temporary satisfaction that the job wore, the excitement of the job wore off. So you change jobs, looking for satisfaction in a career, in climbing the, uh, the ladder of your career, whatever the case may be, only to find out that that too wore off eventually, and, and all of a sudden now uh, you're, st you're, you're as thirsty as you've ever been and you're looking for something else to satisfy that thirst. You found out that jobs, you know, jobs may come and, and jobs may go. Uh, you also find out that uh, the health, our health is the same way. Maybe you have found satisfaction in your health and you were able to enjoy that for years and years. Now all of a sudden you're falling apart because you're getting older. The doctors give you a bad report. The test didn't come back like you thought it would. And you see that being in good health 
no longer bring satisfaction because good health's only temporary. You live long enough, you're going to have some problems along the way. What about relationships? See, I see women, and sadly, somewhere along the way, inside of our homes as moms and dads, we are not teaching our children, particularly our young, particularly our daughters. We're not teaching them about relationships according to the Bible. According to what, what, I, I cannot, I don't even, don't, I don't, I really, I got something in my call about this, so I'll just say it and I won't even preach on it. But for the life of me, I can't figure out why supposed Christian families inside of our churches would ever let their young teenage daughters date some of the thugs that they bring home. You know what thugs are, don't you? You're looking at me like I'm talking some foreign language here. I don't have to detail that and lay that out for you, but. And I'm like, this is your daughter. Oh, you, you pimping your daughter out now? What about, what, what about, have you not taught your daughter some standards and some expectations from a godly young man, somebody they date and somebody they're, they're with? Uh, and so uh, we, see, we see here in this text, though, this woman, one of her, the things that had broken her was relationships. Relationships, relationships. I think I see young women so many times, even in the church, chasing relationship after relationship after relationship. And, and I, see our, I see our daughters many times. It's one dating relationship after another dating relationship after another dating relationship. And I know that's what young people do. They date. I get it. It's almost as if I see our young women in our churches today thinking that they always have to be in a relationship. Well, I just want to share something with you. If you have never taken the time to focus on your relationship with Christ and get that established and anchored and secured and developed and learn who you are in Him, then you're going to be no good in any other relationship that will come into your life. You've got to figure out who, who you are in Jesus first, who He's called you to be who he has valued you to be. And so if Jesus has, and you listen if you're watching on Liberty Live, because I don't know who's watching, uh, but if Jesus exalted the value and the role of the woman, then why would you be with a jerk and a punk who's going to devalue you and lessen your value as a woman or a girl? Are you with me? Is anybody with me? All right, let's make sure I'm not pre speaking Greek here tonight. So relationships, man, listen, young lady and dear man, relationships sour. They go south sometimes, and they don't work out. And maybe you've been looking for satisfaction in a relationship only to find out that it, it turns out the way you didn't think it would, and, and now you're thirsty again. And maybe you've already been through that and you've jumped into another relationship and now you're finding out that it's just like the first one and you really never thought it would be. And now you're thirsty again. And so uh, not only health and, and jobs, but money's the same way. Listen, money comes and goes. If you ever heard Dave Ramsey's testimony, Dave Ramsey was a millionaire a couple times over and lost it all. Lost it all. Had zero in the bank. I know he's not in that case now, but that's his testimony. So, so money comes and goes. Maybe you trusted in money, finances. Things change. Jobs move. Life happens. And now money and things and possessions doesn't bring you satisfaction like you once thought that it did. You're going to find out that, that possessions and all of that, it's just, it's just, it's just temporary satisfaction. Everybody, every young couple, they want to build a house and, and have a new home and all that. And I, I never forget when, uh, when we got our home we live in now and I remodeled it and we got it all just the way we wanted it. And, and I remember walking around one day because this, this is what you live for, it seems like. And then I was walking around one day and looking around and I said, so this is it? This is what everybody makes a big deal over? Uh, this is what young couples that go in debt over? for the rest of their life, crazy amount of debt on a home that they didn't even need, and this is it, it doesn't bring permanent satisfaction. Possessions, the things of money can buy. 
Listen, I'm going to tell you something else. Alcohol doesn't either because you're always going to sober up. And then, and, then, and then when you get sober, the only thing you have left to do is to, to drink more of that temporary satisfaction and that's only going to be for a, a, another 12 hours and then you're, then you're going to sober and you're going to go to bed and, and you'll wake up sober. And then you're going to have to start all over again. It's an endless cycle. It just repeats itself. If you're going to have, if you're going to have satisfaction out of it, you've got to keep it going because it always dies and you'll have to do more and more to have a, a satisfaction that you're only going to find out still in the end is just temporary. At the end of every bottle is, is an empty bottle. And that's about what it does. It just leaves you empty. Drugs is no different if you're watching on Liberty Live because I don't know who's watching, but, uh, but drugs, dope, that's no different because the high is going to run out. And then that's going to leave you uh, begging, borrowing, stealing, selling yourself, whatever you got to do to get the next high. You, you, some, there may be somebody watching, and because I've been around enough to know that uh, you'll steal from your own mother, you'll steal from your mama, your papa, your, your mama, your daddy, your brothers and sisters, anything just to get another high. Because no matter how high you get, no matter what your drug of choice is, it's going to leave you empty. You're going to come down off that high. You're going to crash sooner or later. The only thing to do is to, is to scurry around like a madman trying, trying to find another high. It's all temporary. Don't you see that it is, it is all very much temporary? And, 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 so, and so we see the Lord here had touched the life of this woman with a radical love. And she had drunk of the water that he offered, which was himself a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Uh, and she had a, inside of her a well of living water that sprang up into everlasting life that he had promised would never leave her thirsty, that she would never thirst again. And indeed, that is exactly what took place. Inside of her, there was something that had happened because she had met the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. She had met a man like she had never met before and she had been loved with a radical love like she had never experienced before. And she had the, this thirst that had always been within her quenched so much so that she left her water pot and went to minister for Jesus. She left the thing that represented all of her temporary satisfactions. She left it behind. It's funny because that's John chapter 4. And if you'll read all the way to Revelation 22, from John 4 to Revelation 22, which is probably four-fifths of the New Testament, you'll never find a passage of Scripture that says this woman ever went back and got her water pot. She brought all the men of the city back and then many more come out of the city and come and believed. And nowhere in that text do you find where she went and picked her water pot back up. She never needed it again. Why? Because she had Jesus. How could she want more? How could she need more? And so I don't know if you're watching on Liberty Live and I don't know if you are here in this sanctuary tonight but I believe truly tonight that the Lord is speaking to a woman tonight. Maybe, uh, maybe not a woman at all. Maybe many women. Maybe many young girls. Maybe on Liberty Live, there may be many. You, you, you're watching from another state. You're watching from another country. You're watching from another city in Georgia. You don't even know each other, but God's reaching many of you right now. And maybe, I'm going to say this because it's the power of the internet, and maybe, maybe you are indeed in that bar tonight. Maybe tonight on this Wednesday night, you're burning the roads up, running up and down the street, trying to find the next hit, doing whatever you got to do to get it. And you're actually not going to watch this on a Wednesday night in February 2021. But it may be in November of 2021 before you ever tune this old broadcast in. And the Lord's reaching you across time with his word. Maybe it's many women, but I, I believe the Lord is speaking very powerfully to you right now. And number one, you need to look at where you're at tonight and what brought you here. It's not been accident, coincidence, happenstance, none of those things. But if you look, you're going to see a very detailed plan that God 
has used to get you here in this building or on Liberty Life tonight. You kind of think things have just been happening to get you where you're at, and it's not that at all. It's that God has had this detailed plan for you so he could love you with the radical love. So he could love you with the love that's going to take all of those temporary satisfactions that you have and that you'll lay down your water pot and that you'll begin to experience a relationship with him as he loves you with this radical love and you're going to see that you'll never thirst again. That as long as you want to be filled and satisfied, you have the Lord Jesus as your guide and your guard and your savior who will supply your every need. And so tonight, I'm just asking you, are you that woman? Are you that lady? I remember one night, uh, one day, one Sunday morning, I preached a message out of the book of Ruth, I believe it was. And, and that message was for a woman because the story there was about a woman. And when I give that invitation, I never forget what God did. On one side of the church came a woman in her, a middle-aged woman. I don't know. I'm almost 50, so let's say 50's middle age. A woman about 50, somewhat distinguished, settled in life, settled in her career. When I give the invitation, she stepped out and started down the aisle. At the exact same time, there was a young lady, a young mother over on this side of the church who stepped out. She had been through all that life could offer. She had been through bad relationships, failed relationships. She had been through drugs. She had been through alcohol. She had touched, picked up, and done everything she could do only to find out that it was all temporary satisfaction. And so at that one invitation, God touched a middle-aged, fairly distinguished woman, middle-aged woman, and on the other side, touched a young lady who had tried everything the world had to offer. And they both come up empty, thirsty. But on that Sunday morning, they came down and they met the master for the first time. And they experienced inside of themselves a well of living water where they'll never thirst again. So I wonder tonight, are you that woman? Are you that young lady? Are you that girl? And listen, sometimes what happens is, is we, as we're running the race, we, we, we get off track. We don't have blinders on like those race horses. We've got a broad set of vision. And the things in life will catch our attention and catch our desire and and we'll go chasing hobbies or we'll go chasing pleasures or we'll go chasing things or, or whatever it may be only to find out that it's fun for a while but then we, the things that once made us happy don't make us happy anymore but leave us thirsty. So maybe you've had good intention and pure intent but you sit here tonight and you're kind of thirsty and now that you look back you see the Lord has taken step by step. It's almost as if God has a plan. It's because he does. He has a plan to reach you and love you with a radical love. This is come play something, Abigail. Quickly come play something on the piano. You don't have to sing. You can just play or you can sing and play whatever God would lay on your heart. And I'm asking you, if you're watching on Liberty Live, here's what I'm asking. In just a moment, they are about to start playing and singing. If you're watching Liberty Live, I don't know where you're watching from. You may be riding down the road, listening on a smartphone. You may be in your kitchen. You may be in a living room. Um, you may be in a hotel room. I don't know where you're at. But I'm asking you right now, if you know this is you, that this unnamed woman could very well be you because you've wound up with a handful of temporary sat things that are satisfactions that are only temporary and you've never had your thirst quenched permanently in fact you've never really known true love and I'm not talking about romance 
I'm talking about true love from the Father above. Radical love. Radical love. And tonight you know that you are that unnamed woman in John 4. And you know that God has taken step by step by step and brought you to where you're focused at and watching tonight. When they begin to sing and we begin to give the invitation here, I'm going to ask you to get on your knees wherever you're at with whoever you're with. And just tell them, look, I've got to pray right now. I'm going to ask you to get on your knees and pray and ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. For Him to come into your life and live. For Him to take over and take control because He loves you with a radical love. He values you and exalts you. Uh, your importance because he has a plan and a place for you. And if you're in this church tonight and you just needed some kind of reminder that, hey, you're loved, not just by a husband or not just by a friend and not just by your daddy, not by not just by your pastor, but it's your love with a radical love that can bring a permanent satisfaction to the thirst that's deep, deep inside of you. That's a relation, that, that is a quenching. That is a well of water that only comes from Jesus, from knowing Him. And so you're here tonight and you're struggling in some way. Maybe you don't even know Him. And you need to be saved tonight. Give your heart and your life to Jesus. And you know God's taking step after step after step to bring you here tonight. Well, that's because He wants you to be saved tonight and start that relationship with Him. So I don't know your need, your position, where you're at, but God's done something in your heart these last days, this last week, and he's used John 4 tonight to reach you and to let you know, hey, I'm talking about you. I love you with a radical love. I'm trying to win you. I'm trying to woo you. I'm trying to elevate your position in kingdom work for me. But you got to turn to me. you got to trust me. You got to yield to me. You got to surrender to me. So tonight you need to surrender. You need to yield. You need to seek him. And you'll find him if you seek him. If you'll knock, he'll open. If you'll ask, he'll give himself to you. Stand with me. Have you seen? Somebody at home is praying on Facebook Live right now. If you're in this church and need to come to this altar, you come tonight.